Saturdays were the best day to stand on the dock and watch boats. Oh, oh. Hey! Ah, woo, woo. There were tugboats, and motorboats, and dachshunds, and dachshunds. <laughs> hey, it's Hundley. Hundley loved everything about sailing. How the sails sounded when they caught the wind. How the doorman used the wind in the sails to make the boat go faster. And how there was all that water between their boat and the nearest sloppy monkey. Hey, I never knew you guys sailed. Sure. Hunley likes sailing so much, I put a boat in his dish. <laughs> now drinking water reminds him of sailing, which makes him happy. If you want to see some great sailing ships, watch Pirates of the Wybicus tonight. Any show about sailing ships sounded good to Hundley. It's so good, the first time I saw it, I wished I was a pirate. Since this was a sailboat, George wanted to be the wind and make it go. Let's go, George. Natural Geometric Exploring presents Pirates of the Wybicus. Wow. How'd you like to sail a ship like that, Hundley? <laughs> Now there was a ship that couldn't be sunk by monkey breath. The SS Wybicus was attacked by the bold pirate Black Hat Besame. Ah. Pirate vessel off the port bow. All hands to your stations. Haul win, coxswain. Oh. Oh. Those ships were so dignified and neat. Wouldn't it be great to be an old time captain? Oh. Oh. <laughs> the neatest ship to ever set sail was the SS Dignified. Its commander was world-renowned, Captain Hundley. <laughs> no other captain was as smart, as orderly, or had as wet a nose. All's clear, Captain Hundley, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You know how much your approval means to me, sir. <laughs> Captain Hundley's crew was always orderly and efficient. <laughs> no one knew how to ride the breezes like Captain Hundley, the greatest sailor in the history of wind. But all was not smooth sailing. A new crewman came aboard during a stop in the dry Tortugas. New first mate George was a sloppy monkey with a jelly sandwich. But Captain Hundley didn't worry. He put that monkey in the brig and kept his ship dignified. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> 
yeah, all right. <laughs> okay, George, your turn. You've got to hit the eight now. Do it and you set a record. You've never made it past seven in hopscotch before. Huh? Oh, oh George, when you reach seven, you just have bad luck. <laughs> George was sure that's what he had. Yeah! He had bad luck with pouring, <laughs> and bathtub boating, too. George started to wonder if this bad luck would ever end. Apparently, not anytime soon. Come on, George. Let's get home before we get soaked. Um, let's get you a hat so you don't get too <laughs> wet. Eh? Ooh. Oh, you like this one? George, Charky found her ball. <laughs> Let's get home before it starts again. <laughs> oh. Hey, that's pretty lucky. You want to use it in the toy store? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. You're Dulson's one millionth customer. You've just won a shopping spree. Uh-huh. And you can keep all the toys you can grab. Woo-ha! In ten seconds. Starting now. <laughs> ten. <laughs> nine. <laughs> eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. <laughs> two. <laughs> one. <laughs> Oh, good choice. She's a beauty. Super fast, even in bubble bath. And tell you what, you can keep all the other toys you grabbed. Ooh -ha! Oh, what good luck. The rain stopped, Charky found her ball, you found a coin, then you won all of this. Uh -huh. The man with the yellow hat was right. George's bad luck had become good luck, and it started when he put his new hat on. I call this extreme hopscotch. Mm. You think he can handle it? Uh -huh. Yeah! You can go first. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11, 12, 13. 13? George had never counted past 12. What did 13 look like? Of course, one comes before two, and two comes before three. George played his Four, best game ever. Three, two, one! <laughs> then it came time to throw number eight. Uh-oh, here's where his bad luck kicks in. Shh, give him a chance. If there was ever a time George needed his lucky cap, it was now.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now it's time to pick the winner of our contest. The winner is sheet B3. George, you're in B3. You won. <laughs> Here's the winner. Uh, George won. Ha-ha. <laughs> our winner is that young man. He's a monkey. Well, that young monkey's been picked to be the conductor at our next children's concert in the park. <laughs> <laughs> Come see me after the concert. Ah, welcome, welcome. George, you know what the conductor does, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe I can explain it to you so you can do it without falling down. <laughs> There's a lot of counting in music, such as counting the tempo, the speed of the music. The conductor helps keep the tempo of the music with a little stick called a baton. <laughs> I can count the tempo like this. One, two, three. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This is called four, four time. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Good. There are other tempos too. This is called three, four time. One, two, three, one, two, three. Mm, 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 mm. You see, George, now let's try it together. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Got it? At harvest time, Farmer Rankins liked having a few extra hands around to help pick the apples. This year, he also had extra feet. <laughs> it's real nice of you two to help out. Our orchard is small, so getting every apple is important. Well, that's what neighbors are for. <laughs> He's certainly built for apple picking. Oh. Oh. Mm. Can't say the same for your hat. <laughs> I'm gonna join the missus round back. Once you fill that cart, you can unload it in the washing trough. Will do.
Jumpy had found a perfect apple. One more? Okay, put it in. <laughs> Jumpy's perfect apple was in there somewhere. But where? <laughs> Jumpy apparently didn't know that the Rankins needed every apple. <gasps> Easy now, George. That lever releases all of the apples. George thought that was an excellent way to get Jumpy out of the cart. Ah. <laughs> no! <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> Jumpy decided he should hide his perfect apple. Maybe in there. <sighs> well, that's okay. We can gather them up again. <gasps> <gasps> or I can just do it myself. <sighs> what was this? It must have been some kind of monkey playground with all sorts of things to climb on and swing from. But George wasn't there to play. He had to get that apple from Jumpy. If only he could find a light switch. Farmer Rankin said he loved his apples, but George was surprised that he made a ride for them. Those buckets must be there to carry the apples high out of the reach of squirrels. Wait, where was Jumpy? George wanted to work, but Gnocchi wanted to have fun. <laughs> Nothing makes a cat happier than winning a tug of war. <sighs> Do you still make discoveries that get you excited? Sadly, no. I've seen everything. Just once, I'd like to see something that really surprised me. All the bones were put together. <sighs> but maybe it mattered which bone went where. <laughs> Gnocchi was happy. It looked like George was setting up a new round of whatever this game was. All right, let's see my skeleton. But, but we just ordered dessert. Uh, dessert? Uh, of oh, course, sorry. of course. This memory of mine. But I'm anxious to know how you've handled my precious bones. <laughs> Being a cat, Gnocchi found it exhausting watching someone else do so much work. George's skeleton didn't look as good as that other one, even though they looked almost the same before. <laughs> if they looked the same, he could figure out where the bones belonged by using the other one as a guide. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
George compared every bone and sorted them by size and shape. So before he put them together, he knew exactly what went where. Since George was done sorting the bones, Gnocchi figured she'd mix them up so he could play again. <laughs> so, am I forgetting anything? Or is it now time to see how you've taken care of my baby? <sighs> it's time. Oh, I'm nervous. You have nothing to be nervous about whatsoever. George had one side of the skeleton finished. When he noticed... <laughs> both sides looked the same, except opposite. He could finish by matching the remaining bones to what he'd already done. Gnocchi wished this bone game would end, so they could play something cats were good at. I'll admit I'm worried. No one else but I has ever handled those bones before today. Only our best people have been involved. <laughs> oh! Oh, boy. Your best people are a monkey and a cat? George! <laughs> This isn't the skull we put on it. It seems George was switching them. I don't know why. I do. The monkey's right. The, the monkey's, monkey's right? <laughs> that old skull never looked right. I think George has correctly matched the cranial structure. Huh? Now I wish I'd loaned this out years ago. I want George to check all my future work. <laughs> and that went on record as the first scientific discovery made by a monkey. Oh! <laughs> Assisted by a cat from an Italian restaurant. There were only two things that could get George to take a bath. Bubbles and Sproingy. The most awe-inspiring toy frog that ever lived and the best bubble maker George ever met. A bath just wouldn't be a bath without them. what this belongs to. Oh, George! I found your lost boat. <laughs> in the freezer. You know, George, if you were a little more careful with your toys, you wouldn't lose so many of them. You almost ready to go to the park? <laughs> hey, aren't you glad we found your boat, George? G George? <laughs> Charky wanted to play in the mud, too. Hey, George, what do you say we go home and grab some lunch? 
Maybe you should try and clean up a little bit before we go. <laughs> we could be here all day doing this. You can clean up at home, George. Okay, George, lunch is ready. George, you have to get cleaned up before you can eat. Just take a quick bath. I'll wait. There were only two things that could get George to take a bath. Bubbles and... and... Springy the Frog. George wondered where he could be. George? George, what is taking so long? You can clean your room later, after you clean yourself, and after we eat lunch. <laughs> Hop in. Oh, I get it. You want to be launched like a new ship, huh? All right, here we go. Into the sea. <laughs> oh, you're tickling me. Look, I know you took a bath already this morning, but you're muddy, George. No. <laughs> hey, look at all the fun bubbles. See? There was no way George could take a bath without Springy, <laughs> who had to be around here somewhere. George? There was no way George was going to admit he lost another toy. <laughs> who had to be here somewhere. <laughs> George! George! <laughs> George, aren't you gonna take a bath? Are you going to take a bath tonight? You don't know? Tomorrow? Ever? Oh, well, I can't have a muddy monkey messing up the apartment. <laughs> okay, George, forget about giving yourself a bath. How about we give your truck a bath? You don't mind if I wash my car while you wash your truck, do you? George loved making bubbles anywhere. He didn't need a tub. A bucket of water and a little soap worked too. They were so light and shining and filled with air. But making bubbles reminded him of springy. There! All clean. Good job. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Hi, guys. Oh, you're looking good, George. Hey. Well, at least the right half of you is. <laughs> I guess someone's due for half a bath. I wish, but George won't take a bath anymore. I don't get it. Maybe George feels he's getting too old for a bath. Of course, that's it. My little monkey is growing up. <laughs> now I know exactly what to do. Come on, George, we're going in. Oh, thanks, Professor Wiseman. You're a genius. Well, yeah. I understand your problem with baths now, George. 
And I agree, it's time for you to start taking showers. <laughs> Turn on the water, George, and see what happens. <laughs> oh. George. George. <sighs> okay. Won't take baths, won't take showers. I need to take a walk and not think about any problems for a while. But sometimes, not thinking about something is harder than you think. Bubbles. Maybe, somehow, Springy was nearby. <laughs> Hi, Betsy. Hi, Steve. Hello. Betsy made pretty good bubbles, but she was no plastic frog. Hey, George, we're washing dogs to make money. Want to help? Uh-huh. Yeah, George, why don't you help? There's soap and water and bubbles and soap. <laughs> Great. George can help me make bubbles to attract dirty customers. George figured the triangle bubble maker was broken. But a square bubble would be just as good. <laughs> they fooled me the first time I tried them, too. It doesn't matter what shape bubble maker you use, they'll always turn out round. All this bubble making made George miss Springy even more. Sharky, you're more mud than dog. Hey, George, would you help me? Could you wash Sharky's ball? Don't be shy about getting some of that clean water on yourself. <laughs> of course. The park. The mud. Sharky. <laughs> oh, no, 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 you're getting dirtier. George, slow down. I... Okay, I'll meet you back home. Oh. Wow. You beat me home. Uh, why were we racing? George, you're taking a bath? Okay, then. Enjoy. I, um... Wow, I wonder what that was all about. <laughs> a bath just wouldn't be a bath without bubbles and sprungy. <laughs> Here was all this fresh snow just itching to be played with but it was too deep for George. Hey, George. <gasps> <laughs> Guess the city kid wouldn't have seen cross-country skis before. It's the most fun way to travel on deep snow. <laughs> I've got an old pair of skis you can have. Want to come with me? <laughs> <laughs> this was fun. George took to skiing like like a monkey to ski. Think you can handle that big hill? Yeah. <laughs> With skis on, George could go anywhere there was snow. <laughs> or so he thought. <laughs> you 
can't attack a steep hill straight on like that, George. You gotta zigzag it. When you stop, angle your skis like this so you don't slide back down. Yeah, that's it. There you go, George. That's the way to do it. George had a great view up here. He could see houses and farms. <laughs> and there was his house. <laughs> and then he thought he'd better head home right now because the man was making the last of the cocoa. And no one can resist the <gasps> drink me now power of cocoa. <laughs> Not even the man with the yellow hat. I wonder what that could be. Uh, I'm gonna go take a quick look around. You wait here. <laughs> this wasn't good. He was getting even further from home. It was all downhill from here. He figured he'd be home in seconds. <laughs> there had to be a way to get that ski. Well, one ski was better than none. That was awesome. <laughs> there was no way George could walk home in deep snow without skis. our snowshoes. <laughs> I think he wants to borrow our snowshoes to get to that house. He probably lives there. I'll give him mine. Then how do you get home? You can't walk on the snow without them. Let's pull him home on our sled. Can't. We're already late and Mom's gonna get worried. We can't just leave him here. How about we get ourselves home first and then we'll give the monkey your snowshoes. We live on the other side of the hill. Climb aboard. There's that weird noise again. It's probably kids like us riding sleds a hill or two away. On your marks. Get set. Go! <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't we give the monkey the snowshoes on top of the hill? Now he has to walk all the way back up. I can't think of everything, and a better time to bring that up would have been on top of the hill. Sorry, monkey. George didn't realize how cold and tired he was till he tried to climb that same hill one more time. <laughs> About the only thing that kept him going was the joyous hope of Coco. Hey! 
Now George could see what made that sound, a cold, lost pig. George was almost at the top. The pig was way over there. He didn't even know if he could help. We can't just leave him here. George wondered how a pig got lost all the way up here, and more importantly, how he was going to get it down. What they needed was a sled. that squeal anywhere. It's little Mike. <laughs> he got out last night before it snowed. He's never even seen snow before. Must have been completely mystified by it. Thank you, George. I was wondering what took you so long. There's a cup of cocoa inside waiting for you. Oh, yeah. Well, see you later. Okay, take care. Skiing, sledding, bringing a pig home, then cocoa? This was a perfect day to be a monkey. Ready as promised. Ooh. Ah, it was worth living without it for three long days. <laughs> I'd rather carry it myself, George. Ooh. You're not gonna wear your hat? No, I, I want to keep it perfect till tonight. We're going to the opening of the new planetarium dome. Thanks. Uh, let's get home before anything happens to my perfect clean hat. <laughs> well, we made it safely. Okay, now George, when I get back, we're going right to the planetarium, so take a bath. There'll be photographers there. I want you to look clean and fluffy. George was going to take a bath, just like he was told. It 
sure was a perfect hat. Who could resist trying it on? George wanted Compass to see him in the yellow hat. It'd only take a second. George saw the hat fly this way, but it disappeared. <laughs> the hat was back home and still perfect. Almost. George removed the piece of branch as carefully as any surgeon working on any yellow hat could. Okay, there was just a tiny thread there. No problem. Maybe he needed to pull harder. Or maybe it had to be cut off. George had forgotten that the last time he used his safety scissors was to cut his strawberry jam and banana sandwich. It was only a small smudge. All he had to do was clean it off. This stiff brush got the grill sparkling like new every time, and the grill got dirtier than the hat. <laughs> He may have scrubbed too hard. When I get back, we're going right to the planetarium. George had to do something fast. <laughs> oh, hello, can I help you? want a hat like this one? I have one just like it. Uh -huh. But it's exactly the same. Oh, you want a yellow hat. Okay. Well, that's the only yellow hat we have. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> Gnocchi had never seen George look so worried. <laughs> George showed her the problem. But cats think every wiggling finger is a game. They can't help it. <laughs> Maybe he didn't need a new yellow hat. Maybe all he needed was something like a yellow hat. Hunley tried not to wonder what George was up to. He really tried. But he had to know. <laughs> what would make a good hat? Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Same color? Perfect! <laughs> Hunley had wanted to see what George was up to, and now he couldn't see anything at all. <laughs> Good color. Too floppy. Not floppy, but too pointy. Perfect. If he wanted to be the man with the drippy yellow bag hat. The man with the yellow ice cream stick pyramid hat. The man with the yellow blow-up hat. George realized that no hat he made could ever be the man's yellow hat. But the hole didn't look so bad when there was yellow paper inside. That was it. He didn't need a new hat. He needed to patch the hole. The paper looked good but something made of more hatty material would look better. Ah. Something like a yellow sock. George, did Hunley drop by for a shower, or is one of our towels running away from home? <laughs> George, where's my hat? <laughs> Gnocchi, don't touch my clean hat. <laughs> it has to be perfect for tonight. <laughs> George, why does my hat have a tail and a hole? George couldn't believe he didn't think of that. You see? It looks great. All right, we've got to go. Did you take a bath? <laughs> Fixed hat, fresh suit, clean monkey. I feel like there's something we forgot to do. George always liked the sights and sounds of the countryside. The tastes of the countryside were pretty good too, especially the taste of the Rinkins homemade honey. You ready to sample this year's first batch of honey, George? <laughs> I packed some homemade bread in here to go with your honey. Enjoy! <laughs> if there was anything George liked more than sweet honey, it was eating it with freshly baked bread. But this bee wouldn't let him enjoy his snack. Now, where did it hurry off to? What could be more interesting than bread and honey?
George wondered how a flower could move when there was no wind. Touching all the flowers was definitely not as interesting as a bread and honey sandwich. <laughs> Who'd be mean enough to take a monkey snack? A bear. George had never seen a real live bear wandering around here before. The bee came back. It must have wanted to be friends. That bee thought you were trying to hurt it, George. Bees sting to protect themselves. Now, just keep ice on that finger for a while and you'll be fine. Ah. Oh. <laughs> you want cereal again? You just had it for breakfast. No, George, a bee stung you. A, a bear didn't bite you. Besides, no one's seen a bear in these woods in over 20 years. But George was positive he'd seen a real bear. Hey there, George. Bill always seemed to know everything. Maybe he'd know about the bear. George, did you know no one's seen a bear around here in over 30 years? <laughs> George left those bees alone. Why couldn't they leave him alone? That's just a honeybee, George. Hey, they're going toward my yard. <laughs> wow, when did they build that? I gotta get those bees to leave. I don't want them to hurt my bunnies. George? George? It's a beautiful day, George. Why aren't you outside? <laughs> Come on, help me water the snapdragons. They're in bloom, see? Afraid of getting stung again, huh? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hmm, I have to go to the Rankin's place. Maybe you should come along. I bet they can help you. <laughs> Hello again, George. <laughs> it's us, Mr. and Mrs. Rankin's. <laughs> oh my, is that the bee sting we heard about? It's his first. Now he's feeling a little nervous around bees. Oh, perfectly understandable. <laughs> uh, that's why you'll like this. Ta-da! Bees can't sting you when you're wearing this. <laughs> you want to see something really neat? <laughs> Why, look there. <laughs> Don't worry, we're protected. <laughs> George, you ever wonder why bees like to crawl inside colorful flowers? Oh, they're gathering nectar. You can get close and watch. Now, as the bees get their nectar, their legs transfer a fine substance called pollen from one flower to the next. It helps more flowers to grow in the future. <laughs> Here at the hive, the nectar turns into the bee's food supply. Can you guess what it's called, George? Uh, honey, George. The same honey you like on your bread. Uh, the bees make 
make more than they can eat. That's where we get it. Here's another jar for you. Enjoy. <laughs> George was amazed something so tasty came from something he'd been afraid of. He wanted to say thanks. <laughs> uh, not too close, George. Bees will get angry if you disturb their height. I'm staying to help with the hives, George. I'll be home soon. mud balls. They knock the hive loose, it falls in the can, then I take it to Mr. Rankin's. <laughs> yeah, it's not the proper way to remove a hive, but I need to act fast before bunnies get stung. George knew Bill's plan was going to make the bees mad. There's a proper way to remove a hive. Mm-hmm. Let's get those bunnies somewhere safe and call professional bee removers, huh? <laughs> <laughs> 